To gain a better understanding of how to add vectors numerically, I have a second example for us here. So here, here we have vector A, which has a magnitude of 6. Notice I didn't put any units down. And it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. Then here we have vector B, which has a magnitude of 8. Again, no units. And it makes an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal. So we're supposed to find the resultant, the sum of A plus B. We're also supposed to find the magnitude of that resultant, and then we're supposed to find the direction of that resultant. Now, we typically use the angle phi to indicate the direction of that vector, the resultant, with respect to the horizontal. So let's see what we get. It's not a bad idea to first do a quick graphical sum of these two to get kind of a feel of what that looks like. All right, so we have vector A, we have vector B. I'm going to use a tip-to-toe method. I'll put it over here. So here's vector A. Here's vector B, and notice that the resultant will look like this. Now, this doesn't have to be an accurate depiction of the, oh, maybe I'll just draw a solid line like that. So here would be the resultant vector, which is equal to A plus B. If this here is our A vector, and this here is our B vector. So at least you're looking for something that's this long, and then here, this is the angle that it will make with respect to the horizontal, and we'll call that angle phi. So we're also looking for that angle. That's the direction of that resultant vector. So what was the technique again? The technique was to find the x and y components of each vector first. So we find the x component of a, so a sub x is equal to, and how do we do that again? Well, realize that if we draw this vector in terms of its x and y components. So then this here would be my a sub x, and then this here would be my a sub y. And then here do the same for b here. This would be my b sub x, and this here would be my b sub y. And of course, the a sub x and b sub x are adjacent to their corresponding angles, and the a sub y and b sub y are opposite to their corresponding angles, which gives us the hint when we use trigonometry to say that a sub x is equal to the magnitude a times the cosine of the angle, that would be theta sub a, and to find the y component, that would be the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle theta sub a. So this would be uh, 6 units multiplied times the cosine of 60 degrees. And this would be equal to 6 units, the magnitude times the sine of 60 degrees. Now the cosine of 60 is 1 half, so that would be 3 units, 3.00. I'll just write out the two significant figures. And for the y component, so we take the sine of 60 times 6, and we get 5.20, rounded off to two decimal places. So that would be 5.20. Okay, now we do the same for the b vector. So we have b sub x is equal to b times the cosine of the angle. And we have b sub y is equal to b times the sine of the angle. So in this case, the magnitude was 8. And we have the cosine of 30 degrees. And here we have the magnitude of 8 times the sine of 30 degrees. Now, of course, the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. That's easy. That makes this equal to 4.00. But here, the cosine of 30 is 0.866. We multiply that times 8, and we get 6.93. So what we've done now is we found the magnitude of the x and the y components of both the a vector and the b vector. So I'm ready to go ahead and add those together. So I can say that r sub x, the magnitude of the resultant vector in the x direction, is equal to a sub x plus b sub x. a sub x is equal to 3.00 b sub x is equal to 6.93. Together, that's equal to 9.93. Okay, do the same for the y component of the resultant vector. That's equal to a sub y plus b sub y. And again, notice that a sub y and b sub y here is 5.2 and 4.0. So that would be uh, 5.20 plus 4.00, which is 9.20. So now I have the x and y components of the resultant. I can now write it in the vector format. So now I can write that r is equal to r sub x in the x direction plus r sub y in the y direction. Notice the no notation of how you do that. So now we plug in the values. r sub x was 9.93 in the x direction plus 
9.20 in the y direction, and that is your resultant vector. Okay, that's in vector format. But what if you want to know the magnitude of that? Remember, to find the magnitude of any vector, that's equal to the square root of the x component square plus the y component square. And of course, that's in two dimensions. If it's in three dimensions, it would be the square root of the x component square plus the, compo the y component square plus the z component square. So here that would be 9.93 square plus 9.20 square. And so the magnitude of that, 9.93 square plus 9.2, whoop, let me try it again, 9.93 square plus 9.2 square equals, take the square root of that, and it would be 13.54, the two decimal places. So the magnitude of r, the magnitude of the resultant vector is 13.54 units, and what about the direction, what about phi relative to the, um, to the horizontal axis? Well, remember that if you draw this triangle, uh, this would be the x component of r, so this is r sub x. This here would be the y component of r, r sub y. And notice that for this angle phi, that's the opposite side, that's the adjacent side. And using the arctangent, I can write that phi is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So that's opposite over adjacent. So phi is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side, which would be r sub y, divided by adjacent side, which is r sub x. And of course, plug in the numbers, I get phi is equal to the arctangent of r sub y, which was right here, 9.2, divided by r sub x, which is 9.93. And let's see what that ends up being, 9.2 divided by 9.93. Take the arctangent of that. And we get 42.8 degrees. So phi equals 42.8 degrees. And that, of course, would be relative to the positive x-axis. So now you have the resultant in terms of its vector notation. It's the sum of the x and y components. You have the magnitude of r, which is 13.54. And you also have the direction of r relative to the positive x-axis. And that's how you numerically add two vectors that are not pointing in either the x or the y direction in such a way that you first have to find the x components and the y components of each vector first before you can add them together. Remember, when you add, you can only add x components together and y components together. Now, just to make sure that you understand this, I'm going to show you one more example where the a and b vector not necessarily pointing in the positive directions. What if they point in negative directions? How do you deal with it then? And how do you get that proper notation down? So I'll show you one more example of that.